This is the first lecture of chapter 22. We're going to be discussing uh, electric fields due to point charges. All right, so electric field is a vector field. Uh, electric field E, which we're going to denote as E, so E is our variable for electric field, consists of a distribution of vectors, one for each point in the region around a charged object, such as a charged rod. Uh, we can define an electric field at some point near the charged object, such as point P in figure 21a, uh, uh, as follows. So in this picture here, our electric field is going to be in the direction of the force if you had a positive chest test charge. Um, so if you have a positively charged rod and a positive test charge, the direction is going to be away from the rod. Now conversely, if you had a negatively charged rod, this is all negative, the direction of the electric field would be towards the rod. Okay, um, so a positive test charge Q0 placed at the point, um, placed at a point will experience an electrostatic force F. So that's kind of what we were talking about up here, what we found out uh, in the last chapter. Um, the electric field at point P due to the charged rod is defined as the electric field E at that point. So if we just had a point here instead of a test charge, the electric field is going to be in that direction away. Now again, if this was negatively charged, the electric field would be towards the rod. Um, the equation for the electric field is then E is equal to uh, our electric force F divided by our test charge Q0. Now the SI unit for the electric field is the Newtons per Coulomb, so force per charge. Here's a table of um, some common electric fields, just so you kind of have a sense of magnitudes. Um, so the electric field at the surface of a uranium nucleus would be 3 times 10 to the negative 21st, so quite a large number. Um, going down from there, inside of a hydrogen atom, it's to the uh, 11th power. Um, near the charged drum of a photocopier to the fifth power inside the copper wire household circuits it's to the negative two. So there's quite a large range of electric fields. So electric field lines extend away from positive charges where they originate and then toward negative charges where they terminate. Okay, so it's giving you an instance of a negative charge. So if you had a sphere of negative charge here, your electric field lines are going to be towards it. Now, at any point, the direction of a straight line or the direction of a tangent to the curve uh, to a curved field line gives the direction at that point. Um, so, in the next slide, you'll see what some curved lines look like. Now, the field lines are drawn so that the number of lines per unit area measured in a plane that is perpendicular to the line is proportional to the magnitude of e. Therefore, if you notice here, the lines are very close together. So that means the magnitude of the field is going to be large. Further away, you notice that the, um, the lines are further away from each other, and you're going to have less of a magnitude for the electric field. Okay, so the top picture here is showing uh, the electrostatic force F on a positive test charge near a very large non-conducting sheet with uniform distributed positive charge on one side. So non-conducting means you're going to have an insulator. So showing you an insulator, um, the direction of the electric field is going to be to the right because it's a, well, we're always going to use a positive test charge to figure out the direction. Uh, the electric field vector E at the location of the test charge and the electric field lines in the space near the sheet. Okay, so that's what's showing you in B. All right, so if we have a point here where that um, positive test charge was, we know that E is going to be away. Now on the other side of the sheet, the same thing happens. So you always have kind of look at um, figure C here, you can see that the electric field lines are going to be sh going straight away from the sheet. Now, if we're just talking about point charges, um, it depends on the charge of the point charge, which direction they're going and how it's going to look. Right, so let me move my face out of the way. All right, so looking over here, we have two uh, positive charges. Therefore, we would expect the lines to go away because they're positive, so they're going to start at the uh, charge and then move outwards. The problem is since they're close to each other, 
two positive charges we know are going to try to repel. So the lines aren't going to want to intersect each other. They're actually going to be pushed away from each other. So you end up with this sort of pattern here where they're getting pushed away. Now again, it, or uh, previously in the last slide, we talked about a curved electric field line. So here's where we get these curved lines and the direction of the field at any of the or at any point in the curve is going to be just the tangent line in that direction. Okay, so the electric field due to a point charge Q, or charged particle, at any point, a distance R from the point charge, we put a positive test charge Q0 at that point. Um, the direction of E is directly away from the point charge if Q is positive, so Q is the charge of um, the object, and directly toward the point charge if Q is negative. Um, so then the electric field vector is then shown as this. All right, so E is our electric field. Um, we take our the force divided by our positive test charge, Q0, and that's going to be equal to something that looks should look fairly similar. So this is pretty much the same equation that you have for electric force, uh, but instead of two Qs, now we just have one Q. So it's just the electric field from one point charge. So the net or resultant electric field, if you had multiple point charges, um, or is going to be the same thing that we found last time. So this was um, the total force on the object. So our total electric field is just going to be those forces divided by our test charge, um, or just all the electric fields added together. Now, most of the time we're going to be using this equation. E is equal to uh, 1 over 4 pi epsilon naught q over r squared. All right, so let's work out an example problem. All right, so the figure shows that there's three particles with charge q1 is equal to 2q, q2 is equal to, whoops, minus 2q, and q3 is going to be equal to minus 4q. Oops. Um, so each has a distance d away from the origin. What is the net electric field um, E is produced at the origin? So what is the net electric field produced at the origin? Okay, so here's the point that we're trying to find the field around. So we know our reference point. Now the first thing we can do is might as well just go ahead and find what the what the um, what the directions are. All right, so since Q is negative, we know that the lines are going to be toward, excuse me, Q3 is negative, so they're going to be going towards Q3 and it has a larger magnitude, which is uh, negative 4. Now Q2 is also negative, so it's going to be going towards that. Okay, and Q1 is positive, so you would expect it to go away from Q1, so away from Q1 in this direction. Okay, all right, so we can go ahead and find what the value, um, we'll go ahead and just start with uh, Q1. So if we use our equation, the electric field is equal to 1 over 4 pi epsilon naught, and we'll go ahead and plug in our 2Q for the value of q, and then d squared for our distance. Now this is also going to be the exact same value for um, our second charge, right? Because they're the same magnitude, and they're the same distance away, um, and they're going in the same direction. So it's also going to be our e2 value. So we add them together, e1 plus e2, it's going to be equal to 1 over 4 pi epsilon naught times 4q, as we added in another 2 there. Okay. So if you're looking at this vector, we know that the magnitudes are 2 and 2, so it's going to be really 4 in this direction, and it's also 4 in this direction. So since they're on either side of the axis, the y components are just going to cancel out. All right, so we can just assume that the y components cancel. And in the x direction, going to the right, they're going to add because they're both going in the same direction. So the x components will add. All right. 
So just to get the overall answer then, the total electric field is going to be two times what we found out here. So E1 plus E2. Uh, right? And these are all vectors, uh, but we only want the x components because we know the y's are canceling. So just to get the x components, it's 2 times e1, the magnitude of e1 plus e2 times the cosine of 30. And looking at our triangle here, this is our triangle. Cosine is going to get us the x component. All right. So you can just go ahead and plug everything in at this point. So you have 2 times 1 over 4 pi epsilon naught, 4q over d squared, cosine of 30. And simplifying that, you get 6.93q divided by 4 pi, oops, pi epsilon naught d squared. And that's our answer. That's all for this lecture. The next time we're going to talk about a dipole.